provided for in the law, but I am sure in our strongholds, the party that will carry the day will be the Jubilee Party. We are not going to deny anybody to go for independence, but the party that will carry the day will be the Jubilee Party in our strongholds in Rift Valley. The majority there, Edin Duale, urging members supporting aspirants who were vying on the Jubilee Party ticket, probably who lost in the party primaries, to stay with the party. Like I mentioned, we have Brian Mutier, who's a governance expert um, in with us in the studio. Brian, there's going to be a lot of fallout. Already there is from party primaries, and probably we're going to see more. And what we are seeing is probably the largest number of independent candidates ever in the history of elections in this country. What are your thoughts? Sure. I predicted this... Uh Linda, uh, before in a show like this one. Mm. Uh, but first of all, I want to say that uh, Duala is back. People were actually concerned about <laughs> where he was. Uh, he had gone for a political hibernation. No, probably, but he was, <laughs> probably he was campaigning. <laughs> probably he was campaigning. But I'm happy that at least he's able to answer the many questions that were going around the minds of people. Mm. But again, uh, the issue of independent candidates is actually offered in the Constitution that at least uh, the law is very clear that... Uh, that right is provided. But again, the worry that I want to dissect here is uh, the huge number that has actually been witnessed as of today and yesterday. Linda, you could see the lines were so huge yeah, at the political. 2,000. 2, that, that's a whopping number compared to uh, a, a certain time in 2013 when, when the number was uh, significantly very low. But that begs the biggest, biggest question, why? But I would tell you that uh, at least uh, uh, there, there's an answer for that. The electoral laws that we, we, we came with the other day in terms of uh, party hopping uh, really restricted or narrowed the path for political players in the sense that uh, the choices were really minimized. Initially, at least, you could, uh, you know, jump from one party to the other, you know, make it out and uh, at the end of the day uh, possibly win or, you know, get something out of it. But this time round, it's either you get it wrong or you get it right or you bought out on you, you experience five years uh, in the cold. But uh, again, uh, that shows that we are also maturing sort of uh, in terms of uh, democracy. But that also sends a very, you know, sort of uh, strong signal to the mainstream political parties. This kind of uh, fall out. I think uh, if a political party is able to contend these big numbers in a better way, it would, uh, see, it would significantly see these parties actually, you know, having a more cohesive sort of operation in the sense that uh, we will be seeing less fallouts within these parties in the name of independent candidates. Mm. But because there are some sort of mechanisms which are lacking, or which I might call them weak, in all political parties, in terms of containing these uh, possible fallouts, I think it's a high time that we, they need also to re-examine the are structures they, within. Are they weak structures within, or are they just candidates who cannot accept defeat? First of all, look at uh, some of the factors that are driving candidates to bolt out of a political party after losing through a nomination process and going it through an, as an independent candidate. First of all, the stakes are very high. Initially, you know, for instance, an MCA initially was just another mere councillor who would just pocket less than 50,000 in yeah, terms right of the money. But right now, it's a seat what they, you know, fighting for. And uh, even the professors are going to Joso with the from four levers for that particular seat. You can see how it is. It has become really attractive in terms of the parks. And therefore, that kind of uh, motivation, the drive towards why people are really jostling for that is another debate for another day. But it has really become so so salivating for people to jostle for that particular seat. And that's why if you look at the number of uh, candidates who are vying for MCA, it is outrageously high compared to members of parliament, governors and all that. It is because of the you know, parks that are attached to this kind of position. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with candidates? Not who... really, not really. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about NASA and what has been happening in the last couple of days. Of course, they unveiled their flag bearer, mm. um, Ray Laudinga, and that drew quite a lot of um, concern from supporters of the different core principles, mm. specifically uh, wiper leaders um, have been out mm. there saying this is not a deal that Kalundo should have accepted. And then, just was it Yesterday, the NASA core principles were all at the coast to try and strategize. Mm -hmm. As a governance expert, where do they begin from? Uh, I think uh, the, the, the issue of give and take was uh, very much evident. 
in the sense that everybody was trying to showcase what he's made of in terms of what he's able to bring on the table, that would uh, give him a competitive edge over the other and what would amount to him being more stronger than the other. But that has only been, you know, narrowed down to the issue of numbers only, the numerics alone. But there are other factors that also have to be considered. For instance, the sellability of a candidate should have come into very much handy. But this was not uh, really much of an issue. They were really looking at uh, most of the issues in terms of po popular popular opinion polls, which also played a very huge part in designing or in defining who should go, I mean, who should have this seat. Look at uh, this team that was said there, Linda, uh, a team of so-called experts going to a negotiating table only to come with the obvious. They came with the obvious because this is exactly what Kenyans expected, and it really came as Kenyans expected. So there was nothing new apart from, you know, sugarcoating sugar a few positions here and there, uh, giving us a face of the country if they want us to believe so. But at the end of the day, they looked at a scenario, because they had several scenarios, they looked at a scenario that would uh, give Jubilee a run for their money. And that scenario was just a repeat what uh, the DP would is just call a scenario a that would give Jubilee a run for its money? Well, sometimes I would say that... Uh, the official electioneering period has not yet been uh, unveiled. This is from 28th of this month, and that will be a whooping three months of, you know, a lot of jostling, oh, a lot of political heat. Been? There has been a lot of campaigns. Well, in this according to the law, according okay, to yeah. the law, electioneering period is between 28th and 8th of. Okay. Yes. So that it should be very clear. Mm. So. Right now, the referee, who is the IBC, has no much control over what is happening. But the restricted laws that apply to electioneering period will be applicable from the dates of 28th of this month to August 8th. And therefore, that's where we are now going to see them uh, flexing their muscles, trying to control the game, trying to give re some red cards here and yellow cards here, mm. and, so, uh, and so on and so on. And therefore, for NASA to give us that lineup, to me, it was the obvious one. And uh, if the question that we have asked whether it is really the lineup that would that give a Jubilee run, for, a run for, for the money, I would say it's a little bit highly to say that because they still have to showcase what they are made of. They have policies and manifestos that they have to harness and they have to gel them together because WIPA has its own manifesto, ODM has its own, Ford Kenya, Chama Chama Shinani. They okay. have to find a model where they harness all these manifestos to be one so that now they can go out there to Wanjiku and showcase okay. what they are made of. Fine, mm -hmm. but I'll, like I mentioned, they were at the coast. They're trying to come up with a strategy. Mm -hmm. From where you sit, what is the one message that they can pass to Kenyans to be able um, to get Kenyans to um, give them their support? What is the one thing they need to fix? Um, I think uh, the biggest issue that they would want to address would be the issue of uh, high cost of living. I think of late you, could, uh, you, you can see that it has really become a talking point where, you know, they're trying to, even social media is awash with this uh, information where milk. they are trying... Price of milk. <laughs> comparative analysis of <laughs> food stuffs like milk. It was 40, but then now it's uh, 60, now it's 70. Have, you know, the people actually have their mouths. You know, of three weeks ago it was this one, now it's yeah, this one. Exactly. They have their facts okay. uh, really put in place. Yeah. And I think these are basic issues that really uh, moves Monahenji when it comes to political choice. And uh, they say when you want to, 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 to catch the attention of a man, you have to touch his, his, his belly or his stomach. The stomach. Yeah, exactly. And therefore, if uh, NASA is able to touch that stomach or that belly, literally, I think that will be a very, very key uh, strength for but them. The okay, would you say the president mm. did the same with the 18%? Um, um, on Labor Day? Uh, I think uh, that, that one was not quite much significant uh, uh, in terms of uh, giving him some mileage. In fact, some of the issues that give uh, President Uhuru mileage are uh, some of the issues like the capping of the interest rates, some of the issues such as... Uh, uh, I mean, demystifying the presidency, mm. where even Linda can walk into state house and shake hands. Even somebody oh, like Bahati okay. can jump watching, on that so seat. Invite us to state house. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody like Bahati can just jump, uh, do some flip flopping uh, on his uh, seat yeah. and get away with that, and therefore that has really demystified the presidency thanks mm. to his, uh, his, 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 his style of leadership. Okay, so. Mm. Let's leave NASA alone and focus on its uh, flag bearer, Raila Odinga. Mm. We do know that ODM delegates are set to ratify that endorsement of Raila Odinga as the party's flag bearer. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I think uh, a time like this one, Linda, you are likely to see even more of... Uh, maybe parties and even personalities coming out in, in the forefront to declare their allegiance 
politically speaking. Uh, in America, these kind of uh, key informants and uh, uh, big personalities tilt the scales. So mm. the same cases in Kenya also, where, for instance, in America, where win Oprah. Is it a Winfred Oprah or Winfred? Oprah Winfred. Oprah Winfred. Oprah Winfred. Really, Brad, correct really? me for that. <laughs> <laughs> she would come out and uh, whoever she declares as her port for, I think that's some, that person really acquires a lot of uh, political mileage. Basically, they're called kingmakers. The kingmakers and, uh, you know, yeah. uh, th 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 that kind of uh, tag. Mm. Yeah, in Kenya also, we are not exceptional. Yesterday, I think uh, my Nakageni, if I'm not right, if I'm not wrong, came out also publicly to declare his support for uh, the Sonko candidature. And therefore, this is not something new. Political parties will also be there in the forefront, mm -hmm. also showing where they want to play their game. And uh, for DP, to, for, for the Democratic Party to come out openly to say that they are going to, de to demonstrate their allegiance to NASA, mm -hmm. I think it's also something that we are likely to be treated in the near future, where smaller parties that I'm told have also been, uh, been, uh, are being approached here and there to show, to, 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 to show that they are going to support a certain political parties. So at a time like this, we are going to see more of this, Linda. Okay, so mm. when all this was was unfolding, someone actually asked, so is Raila Odinga running as an ODM candidate or as a NASA candidate? That should be NASA. Of course, there's a NASA. There's a, there's a spirit because, of course, uh, as much as they did not go the Jubilee way, where the, most of the constituent parties were folded, were folded yeah. NASA decided to just maintain their families, decided to maintain their pillars without breaking them off so that they can constitute the bigger family of NASA. Mm. And therefore, for, in the spirit of NASA, I think uh, they are still, uh, uh, Raila is still, uh, you know, uh, running as a NASA candidate, not mm. an ODM, of course. All right, so yeah. Jubilee are also nominating Uhuru and uh, Ruto for the presidential election. Th they've actually had their acts together, sure. these two. I sure. mean, they've, they've always made it very clear who the presidential flag bearer would mm -hmm. be, who the running mate would be. Mm -hmm. Um, one, let's talk about um, now nominating the two for the office and uh, the time that now NASA has, mm -hmm. because you have, what, less than 100 days to the general election. Mm -hmm. Where does that leave NASA? Which is funny, what, which is enough, actually, uh, for electioneering. You think? Yeah, it is, because uh, they were there before. It's not like uh, they are just uh, dropping from heaven. They were there, they were still warming the political space, and we know what they are made of. We know what they stand for, and That's we it, know... That should be dangerous for them. That, that is not good, you know. It is not. What, what, what was remaining was only the governance structure that was unveiled uh, a fortnight ago. And uh, the, the, the issue is here, here is uh, that we knew the personalities who are running, who will be running the show. But for Jubilee, it was an uh, intact house that was just laying low to wait for that kind of uh, news to be broken to them, uh. for them to know which is the right strategy to apply in order for them to be able to match them, even politically speaking. Now they, uh, they know, and you could hear the DP the other day in Dika chiding them that uh, Niwale Wale too, uh, you know, there's nothing that's new coming. If it's a rematch, we are ready for this, and uh, it's just trendy, a matter trendy. of game go. Okay, Brian, it would mm -hmm. not be fair if I let you go without asking you a very critical question. Uh, question especially this sure. is a, a program that focuses on uh, international mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. let's look at both jubilee and nasa what do the two sides bring mm -hmm. that is uh, can be talked about in terms of foreign relations oh absolutely uh, one of the strongest uh, pillars within nasa is kalonzo musioka who has been tested and proven that he has he is made of it when it comes to managing issues to do with international affairs Kalonzo has worked within that docket for quite some time and he has proven to the world that he is the man made of it. And if he is able to take that kind of experience and the relationships that he has created in his 32 years of experience in the politics, yeah. I think it will be a plus for NASA. But again, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is somebody also whom we would not wish him just uh, away like that. He's somebody who has uh, really m done what, uh, you know, Kibaki, Moi and the Kenyatta combined have not been able in terms of attracting the kind oh. of attention <laughs> that we witnessed uh, in the last, uh, in the yester years. You could see Obama coming, Japan Prime Minister coming, India Prime Minister coming.